All right, let's dig in with the guys, Bryant McFadden, Ryan Wilson here. Uh, gentlemen, I, I don't think it's overstating it to say that 44 seconds really could have determined the outlook of what's out in front of this Tampa Bay team. So let's go small picture and what it means to the big picture here. We've seen it time and again before. Tom Brady leading one of these drives, Ryan Wilson. Here he does it again. How big was that minute of football for the rest of this season for the Bucs? Enormous. Uh, the good news is they're in a terrible division, and now they're, they're tied uh, in terms of record, the same record as the Atlanta Falcons, who lost the game today to the Chargers. So, again, you, you limp your way through all the, the bad stuff to try to figure out what's wrong, and hopefully you can figure that out in time uh, to make a run in late December and January. The problem is it's November, and, and December's not that far off. Mm -hmm. So the Buccaneers have a ton of things to fix. The offensive line is, is a mess because of injuries. Uh, the defense has, has struggled at times with injuries as well, although Vita Vea was absolutely dominating today. Uh, Matthew Stafford can certainly attest to that. And, and the Buccaneers' offense a, as a whole has looked nothing like the Buccaneers' offense that, of course, won the Super Bowl when Tom Brady arrived two years ago. But, again, it's a win. It's an ugly win. It counts all the same. They're four and five uh, atop that division with the Falcons. And, and, again, this is a week to try to figure out how to make this thing better. So far, it hasn't worked, but as they go along through this process, uh, they'll be happy to stack wins uh, as they do it. Uh, no doubt about it. Uh, no pictures on the scorecard, and this is one of those type of wins here for Tampa Bay. But BMAC, when you're a part of one of these teams and you're in one of these locker rooms where everything seems difficult the way it does for the Buccaneers right now, and you do scratch one across in an ugly fashion, can a team maybe glean more than that when you're trying to get a 16-wheeler turned around and headed in the right direction? No question. Big time sigh of relief for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This was an ugly win, as Ryan mentioned, but it is a win. Now, can they utilize this win to become a building block and moving forward to be more consistent? We have to wait and see. But I can tell you this much. They have a lot of problems on their team, and currently they don't have enough problem solvers. Mm. So they just got to find a way to muster up these type of wins to be able to to get to the promised land, which is finding a way to get into the playoffs and potentially win their division that is basically watered down. So, yes, kudos to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for fighting, staying competitive, to come up with a huge win. But I don't feel – I feel the same about this team. Okay. Regardless if they would have won this ball game or, or not, I still feel the same. They can't run the football. Offensive line has been atrocious. Defensively, they did play better in today's matchup. But granted, they played against a team that can't run the football either. So when you look at the who's of who in regards to some of the more competitive teams in the NFC, Tampa's still not in that conversation right now. They're still not in that conversation. Yeah, they'll round out the month uh, against the Seahawks and the Browns. Then it goes Saints and Niners to start the month of December as they do try and tune, turn this around. Still plenty to tend to. And as you guys both said there, they do have the benefit of being in a division that's allowed them this time to figure it out. No such benefit on the Los Angeles side of things, guys. And really, the jarring statistic at this point of the season, 71-10. to 10. The Rams have been outscored in the fourth quarter this season. Just massive historic levels of ineptitude. That's the worst scoring differential in the fourth quarter by any team in the NFL. Ryan, when you look at L.A. and the clock that they're up against with the teams in their division and the greater picture in the NFC, what did today mean for the big picture? Oh, it's a wrap for the Rams. Okay. There are too many injuries and too too many too many issues to overcome personnel wise that they they can't make up for. The trade the trade deadline's passed. They had no trade capital in which to use. Although they were willing to give up a couple of future first round picks for Brian Burns, Carolina wasn't interested. But I'll speak specifically at the end of that game, Joe. Right before Tom Brady did a Tom Brady uh, typical touchdown drive that we're used to seeing over the last twenty years. Uh, it was third and five on their own twelve. The Rams had a hundred, like a minute 39 to go. They ran the ball to run off another 30 seconds. That 54 seconds didn't matter. It was only 60 yards Tom Brady needed to traverse. He did that with his eyes closed. On third and five, call your best pass play to get five yards, and then you win that football game. Mm. I understand the offensive line is decimated. I understand Matthew Stafford's taking a beating. If you can't get five yards with Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup, you deserve to lose. Guess what happened? They ran the ball, they punted, Tom Brady did this thing, and they lost. So I, I think that's just a culmination, maybe a microcosm of their season. That one play, I get why they did it, but in retrospect, go for it. What do you have to lose? You know, Personnel-wise, on the offensive side, they're bad. They're bad. Think about how entertaining this team was offensively a year ago. Matthew Stafford, his first year with the Rams, I think he threw around 40 touchdowns or something like that, second in the National Football League behind Tom Brady. Currently, seven touchdowns, eight interceptions. He has been horrible. 
right? Mm. Offensive line-wise, we can talk about their issues all day long. Running the football, they can't run the football. Defensively, we saw better effort. We saw more energy. We saw more consistency. But they needed to make that one extra play to be able to win this ball game because offensively, they can't do anything. And outside of Cooper Cup, you don't see any reliable pass catchers in, the, in this offense. And I agree with you, Ryan. Their season is disco dead. Disco <laughs> has been dead for a long time. It's not coming back. That's the same for the Los Angeles Rams. If you have any hope that they can find a way to get this season back to be able to make a push for the playoffs? No, I don't believe in it. I like Seattle. I like San Francisco. And right now, you look at the bottom dwellers in their division. I mean, it depends on who you like more personally, the Cardinals or the Rams. With both teams, I believe their season is disco dead. Yeah, the, the road back is a long one as they'll uh, go at the Cardinals, Saints, and Chiefs next up. Still plenty to figure out in L.A. as Maybe they just continue to celebrate a Super Bowl. The hangover is real, folks, and that's where L.A. finds themselves. Gentlemen, great work as always. We'll check back in in just a bit. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.